Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> we'll get our program started. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for coming this afternoon to a very uh, timely uh, issue regarding small and medium-sized enterprise financing in Korea. Uh, we're very honored to have today's guest, Dr. Hyun Tae Kim, from uh, the president of the Korea Capital Market Institute. All of you have his bio in, in front of you, but uh, I'd like to just highlight a few uh, aspects of his, of his background. Uh, just from his bio, you can sense that he is a very important person in Korea. Uh, he seems to be advising every single agency in Korea, <laughs> uh, including the National Economic Advisory Council uh, and also the Advisory Council of the G20 Research Group, the Foreign Exchange Market Stability Committee, the Financial Advance Advancement Committee, and the Financial Regulation Evaluation Committee. Uh, he's also uh, a consultant for the World Bank and, and also an advisor, a past advisor for the Korea Exchange. Uh, he has received his BA and MBA from Seoul National University as well as his PhD <coughs> in finance from SNU. Uh, we just learned that uh, he's uh, also did quite a bit of study here in the United States, a postdoc at MIT as well as at UPenn. And so um, Dr. Kim is, is, a, is a contributor of KEI. Uh, I don't know if any of you were here last year, actually exactly a year ago when uh, Dr. Kim spoke at our green finance program, which was a, a day-long program <coughs> looking at uh, uh, Korea's green finance uh, infrastructure. As well as, uh, uh, if you haven't seen this already, this is our last, uh, ep um, um, our the recent book we put, published on Korea's economy, 2011. Uh, he also contributed an article in here. Um, but uh, today is a, a slightly different topic uh, on re related to the architecture for effective SME financing in Korea. And uh, from his presentation, he'll be taking uh, us through a comprehensive look at the financial uh, structure and institutions that are uh, supporting the SME in Korea. Uh, as we all know, Korea's large corporations are some of the most dynamic uh, and the most uh, worldwide known. But SMEs um, have not been as competitive in Korea and could potentially be a long-term growth challenge to Korea, as well as to its labor market, as well as to the future of wealth distribution. And hopefully through um, Dr. Kim's presentation today, we'll get a better sense of what the future of SME is in Korea. And uh, we also had some conversation about the upcoming election, and maybe he can give us some insight on that as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn the table over to Dr. Kim, and he'll give us a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Abraham Kim. I'm very pleased and honored uh, to be here today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, President Fletcher of Vice President Abraham and other, st other staff members of KI for inviting me to this uh, prestigious uh, round table uh, seminar. Actually, this is my uh, second time to stand in front of this podium last year. Uh, I visited and delivered the presentation about uh, green economics and green finance in Korea. Uh, the format was a little bit different. Uh, other panelists will also participate. But today, uh, as the title shows, I'm going to talk about uh, system architecture for effective SME financing. <clears throat> yes, uh, small and medium-sized enterprise, SME, is uh, a very uh, important and pivotal issue uh, regardless of countries. Uh, regardless, irrespective of countries, uh, Encouraging SMEs by facilitating uh, capital formation is a systemically important issue. Uh, this is not just an uh, economic agenda, but also the political issues. Uh, why? Why this is so important? Uh, 
not just from the economic viewpoint, but also uh, the political uh, standpoint. In Korea, I can answer this question with one uh, number. Uh, the number is 9988. You don't understand what, that, what this means. Uh, this means is this. And in Korea, as you know, we have uh, many uh, globally competitive large corporations like Samsung Electronics, Hyundai Motors, and Postcos, NSK, and other large companies. Uh, but if we take a look at the number of the companies in Korea, small and medium-sized enterprise account for 99% total number of the company. And so what is 8-8? Eight, eight? Somebody already guessed about it. Uh, but the people employed by the small and medium-sized enterprise, it takes up almost 88%. So in Korea, we usually call this 9988, but this is a very important number. And this uh, uh, number shows how important SMEs are uh, in Korea. But I, I don't think the situation in U.S. is not that different. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what's happening here in U.S., but uh, almost the same in the number of the companies and the number of employment. So in this regard, uh, encourage and invigorate SMEs is very important. Uh, but what I'm trying to do today uh, and what I'm aiming at uh, today is to uh, discuss about some issues about how to build up the architecture for uh, SME financing. So, so many people talk about these issues. So what is new and what is different, a little bit different, uh, today's presentation? And I, I, I can uh, have uh, two perspectives in mind. The first is uh, architectural view. This, uh, I would like to focus more on the bird eye view rather than analyzing each component or building blocks of the architecture. The second one is, I would rather call it functional approach rather than institutional approach. So my intuition is that regardless of the countries, whether they are advanced or emerging, five, there are five essential functions that should be delivered uh, to create or build up the financial system architecture, system architectures for SMEs. For example, policy making uh, regulations and uh, information production. And as for the finance, credit guarantee, uh, bank loans, and capital market is uh, five uh, functions. And so this is essential functions that should be delivered. But uh, what is different country by country is that who should deliver what function, and which is critically dependent of how uh, much developed financial market each country has that decides uh, which function is, should be delivered by the, uh, which companies or uh, which institutions. So let me start with the framework uh, for the presentation today. That this uh, simple picture shows that there are uh, five uh, building blocks, components for uh, building up the system architecture for SMEs. One is a roof, and one is a basement, and three pillars. The first. Uh, is a policy making, policy making and, and the regulation and related legal framework as a roof. But in Korea, we have independent and separate uh, ministry which regulate uh, small and medium business uh, SMEs, which is SMBA, Small and Medium Business Administration. And they are doing their job under the legal framework of the important act, act on SMEs. But I do not write in this picture, but the other important uh, act, which, is, which bring about hot discussion, hot debate 
uh, currently in Korea is the act on the promotion of collaboration between SMEs and large corporations. It sounds interesting, but uh, this is uh, uh, it's a very important uh, uh, act which is on the discussion in Korea. And the other, and at the basement, uh, one of the critical functions and easy to forget is uh, information production. If we take a look at the SMEs uh, from the perspective of investors, of bankers, or institutional investors, or even from the invest bankers, it's, uh, from, we can say that it's a very risky and they have no track record. So it's, a, it's easy to fall into the lemon market. So to make SMEs to help finance, to help finance SMEs, the first thing we should take care of is to produce the information and reduce the information asymmetries between SMEs and the investors. So we can think of rating agencies, other institutions, to produce the information about this, but uh, especially for SMEs, uh, startup SMEs, it's very hard for commercial banks to invest or allocate resources to produce information about startups because they are not that profitable, attractive business area. So I will talk about this in the later. We have very special uh, institutions, uh, Korea Enterprise Data, KD, which is a sub theory of Korea's public a credit guarantee provider, and this is a place uh, very uh, important, pivotal role in providing information about SMEs in Korea. So as you may know, the SMEs is not a, a domestic issue in Korea, it's a global agenda. So many institutional investors talk about this. Even G20 proposers talk, uh, discuss these issues. Uh, as for the SMEs, Canada is very active. They propose to come up with some uh, best models and best practice to mobilize equity or uh, equity capital for SMEs. And the Basel Committee is also indirectly related to the SMEs because after the subprime crisis, uh, what this institution is doing is impose more stronger and stricter regulations to the financial institution like commercial bank. But they even uh, impose less strict regulations to the commercial bank which provide loans SMEs or even uh, venture capitals. Uh, the other act you are very familiar to you is the Dodd-Frank Act in US uh, the full name is Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Uh, this is also a very tough tightening the regulation in the financial services industry, but they exempt the SMEs from um, the tightening uh, regulations. And the other important act, which is uh, on the discussion in US, I read the newspaper Wall Street Journal, last week, just before I left Seoul, is that Jobs Act in the United States. Have you ever heard of it? Jobs, yes. Uh, the name is not, not the Jobs in Steve Jobs. It's just Jobs itself, J-O-B-S Act. Uh, the full name is Jump Start Our Business Startup Act. Very interesting, very intriguing act. And the House of Representatives and the Senate already passed this act, and this act is waiting for the sign from the President Barack Obama. So what this act is aiming at is supporting job creators. What they mean by job cre creator in this act is SMEs. They newly defined some categories of SMEs, emerging gross companies. Emerging gross companies, they are very similar to SMEs. So. The main content of this act is that to help finance and facilitate the capital formation of 
emerging growth companies and SMEs in the United States, uh, they exempt or relieve a lot of these companies from very uh, strict regulations from SEC or uh, with uh, strict, uh, strong reg uh, provisions specified in the Dodd-Frank Act. So, but uh, from the perspective of financial economists, uh, personally, uh, and many financial economists, even the scholars in the law school, uh, do not agree on this idea. So, because uh, some professor, uh, John Coles of Harvard Law School, even criticized this act during the public hearing hosted by the Banking Committee of U.S. Congress that uh, this is an uh, election year uh, show off and they are trying to support uh, these companies, SMEs, at the expense of investor protections. So when it comes to capital market, the most important player is the investors. Because if they are not confident about the quality of their target, if they're not comfortable with the target companies, they inject their money, they do not invest in that SMEs in the first place. That will increase on the that will increase the cost of capital from the part of SMEs rather than mitigating their cost of capital. That's what the financial economist is saying. But anyway, uh, if they are successful, this will be a, a very uh, uh, a kind of byproduct uh, under the environment Occupy Wall Street. But uh, interestingly enough, in Korea, almost a uh, similar thing happens in Korea. Uh, this is... Uh, Commission Yes. Uh, we have a uh, act on the promotion of collaboration between SMEs and uh, large corporations. So in accordance with this act, Korean government created, created a special commission. As uh, we call this uh, growth uh, growth share commission or a commission on shared growth, shared growth commission or commission on growth for SMEs, uh, large corporations. The former prime minister of Korea, of course we have a president, is a number two in the political power. Uh, Jung -un, Mr. Jung Un Chan used to be uh, the chairman of this commission, but I heard the news that he just quit it. Why? Because he wanted to run for the president election this coming December. But uh, the mission and activities of this commission uh, include, but not limited to, uh, the, the decide and select SME appropriate business and product. Sounds very uh, strange, uh, but the main mission of this commission is to looking at the industries. For example, if they decide the retail, a small bakery business, is more appropriate for SMEs rather than large corporations, then designate this as the SME appropriate business. That does not necessarily mean that large corporation is prevented from um, joining, coming into this business, but uh, they, if they, large corporation, corporations stay away from this business, they get more score in the shared growth index. And this act, and this commission specifies that the shared growth index of 30 or 20 and large corporations, of course, including Samsung Electronics and Hyundai Motors, should publish and disclose uh, their shared growth index. So, of course, large corporations are angry about this act. So there is a hot debate is going on. Uh, but uh, my guess is that uh, considering uh, the geographic landscape in Korea, regardless of the conservative main conservative party or progressive main opposition party will take the power in this 
general election next week or presidential election in December, uh, they will put more emphasis on SMEs rather than uh, large corporations. But the interesting thing in Korea is that there is no big difference between the conservative party and the progressive party. They are getting um, more similar and similar. So it's very hard uh, for people uh, which uh, party is more conservative, more progressive. So this is uh, in association with SME, this commission is a hot issue. And if uh, the large corporations also introduce a benefit sharing system or profit sharing system, of course voluntarily, not by obligation, but they get more higher scores uh, in their uh, shared gross index. But having said that, I still have uh, some reservation about this uh, com activity of commission of the philosophy of this uh, commission. What I'm afraid of is that uh, uh, this scheme uh, might compromise the basic and fundamental uh, principles of capitalism at market, capital market. So that's exactly what is going on in Korea. Now let's uh, turn over to the financing issues uh, for the SME. Bank loan is traditionally a uh, very typical uh, financing tools for SMEs. But SME is uh, a very risky target from the perspective of loan providers. So regardless of countries, at first stage, uh, government or government sponsors institutions play the pivotal role. So this is the place, SME financing is, is the place where the government uh, should step in. So there are two ways. First is a loan provision by government uh, sponsored institution. The other is uh, by the commercial bank. Let's take a look at first uh, the grant of loans to the SMEs by the government uh, sponsored institutions. Uh, there are two schemes. First one is direct lending by the government or government sponsored institutions. Uh, the IBK is an industrial bank of Korea. It used to be named SME banks, but they changed the names a couple of years ago. So uh, about uh, 10 or 20 years ago, to support SMEs, government directly allocate the capital into the SMEs just through by way of IBK. But these days, the unending scheme on the right hand side picture is more active and play more important role in commercial uh, and the loan provision to the SMEs. Uh, this is uh, the main uh, motivation to uh, come up with this scheme is is that all, uh, the only thing government do in the scheme is allocate the capital into uh, the commercial bank. And the commercial bank themselves engage in the remaining activities like screening, executing, monitoring loans to SMEs. The basic assumption in this scheme is that commercial bank is much better in screening monitoring and selecting the targets. So if we want to take advantage of all lending scheme, then we must have well-functioning and commercial banks in the first place. So that's uh, why we introduced this scheme these days. And the main vehicle through which this all lending scheme is executed is Korea Finance Corporation through which uh, government's money is allocated to the commercial bank. Korea Finance Corporation was established about uh, three years ago by spinning up by, from the Korea Development Bank, most policy uh, financial institution in Korea. Uh, Korea Development Bank is now in the process of privatization, so government decided to put together 
the policy related functions and divisions and separate it from the KDB and establish the Korea Finance Corporation. And this plays a very important role and on lending process. So as for the direct lending, uh, uh, commercial bank is growing very fast, uh, becoming a more important player here. Uh, but still, uh, IBK has visibilities in this market. If we take a look at uh, the IBK, uh, the loan to SME is still account for the largest proportions. But uh, this uh, picture shows that The proportion of bank runs financed by the uh, SMEs financing through the IBKs uh, getting smaller and smaller, and the commercial bank takes uh, more portions as for the bank loans. So commercial banks are uh, doing this business, but they think uh, this is very uh, high-risk business, especially after the subprime crisis. Basel Committee uh, imposed more strong, stronger and tight, tighter, more tight uh, capital adequacy ratios. If the commercial bank provides loans to SMEs, so these days they have difficulty in providing loans to SMEs. But as time passes by, uh, loans to SMEs by if we take a look at the diagram, uh, which shows the loans to SMEs by financial institutions, and commercial banks is responsible for uh, more than 50%, followed by the specialized banks like IBK and KDB. The next issue is about credit guarantees. Credit guarantee is also an important uh, pillar as for uh, the SMEs financing. So we can break down the credit guarantee into three categories. Uh, one is uh, uh, guarantee provision by uh, public institutions. We, Korea, have two public credit guarantee providers. First is Korea Credit Guarantee Fund. The other is Korea Technology Credit Guarantee Fund. So it sounds similar and it works. Uh, their functions are very similar, so every time the uh, government has changed, they talk about how to combine and integrate, merge these two, uh, these two institutions, but they exist in separate uh, beings. And the second way of providing credit guarantee is through the credit derivatives. And here, a credit default swap and other credit derivatives uh, plays an important role. And as you know, uh, credit default swap uh, is a very useful hedging tool for credit investors. Uh, the only problem about CDS is the overuse or misuse or sometimes abuse of it, but originally CDS is a very useful hedging tool. And third way to provide, okay, third way to provide uh, guarantee to the SME is uh, by insurance companies, uh, monorail insurance company in US. But we don't have this specialized uh, insurance company in Korea. We have all uh, mixed and uh, life insurance companies and uh, casualties insurance companies, but we do not have a uh, specialized uh, insurance company like uh, Monorail Insurance Company yet. So SMEs, uh, in particular uh, SMEs, especially startups, it's very difficult for private institutions, even commercial bank, provide uh, the grant, the credit guarantee. So why, uh, this is the reason why the government is stepping in the process and build up uh, the public credit uh, guarantee providers. So we have two uh, national uh, credit guarantee uh, providers, and each regional government also has uh, credit uh, providers uh, for health finance, uh, their regional SMEs, and, and once they're for the 
to invigorate the regional economies. Uh, credit guarantee is very uh, direct and uh, simple solution to take care of to address the asymmetric information between uh, fund providers and SMEs. But uh, this institute, the KCMI, um, uh, sometimes work with uh, international institution, the World Bank, ADB, and uh, uh, during uh, the past couple of years, we have deeply involved in the setting up the venture capital industry market in China and the Thailand. And I was also involved in the project. And most frequently asked the question is, yes, as we, we all agree on the idea that uh, public credit guarantee provider is important. We should do this. But we know, also know that uh, if we build up uh, these public institutions, probably that might bring about a huge amount of moral hazard problems, like in Korea. Of course, in Korea, uh, we uh, these two public credit providers, credit guarantee providers, credit guarantee fund and technology credit can provide. So they run their funds uh, without any restrictions, so, so without any regulations. So it has, uh, it made uh, big, uh, it made contributions to reduce the value of their funds. So to operate this public credit guarantee provider more efficiently, I would like to say uh, a couple of comments on these issues. And the first one is we need to have performance evaluation committee because this public credit guarantee public credit guarantee provider is very vulnerable to the political uh, inference, especially from the main uh, ruling party. So my recommendation is to China and to uh, Thailand is that you must include at least one member from the main opposition party that might embed it, uh, embed a stabilizer to control uh, the moral hazard. The other one is just like equity portfolios and loan portfolios, credit guarantee provider also set up and come up with their own diversified portfolios and providing the credit guarantees. And the other comments, uh, my is a very, we have, is the dilemma we face with uh, because startup companies are very risky, allocate more money, more capital to seasoned companies. But in that case, we cannot support the startups. So this is not a perfect recommendation. And the other last one, last recommendation I have is that because credit guarantee provider share the risk with SMEs, uh, so they have every right to enjoy the upside potentials. So if they provide credit guarantees to the SMEs, uh, they might ask for uh, the opportunity to invest in the convertible bond, the bond with warrant, uh, which might, uh, will make uh, this credit guarantee provider uh, more profitable in the future if they, for example, SME is uh, successful in, in their going public or they will sell uh, their equity portions uh, with a, a reasonable price. So uh, that's the four recommendations I have when we first set up the, the public credit guarantee provider. Still, we in Korea don't have a uh, monoline insurance company, so uh, only in the credit guarantee market, only public institutions are working here. And as I told you at the beginning of the presentation that a uh, very important uh, function that must be taken care of and in association with uh, SME financing is information production. In Korea, so when it comes to uh, information production, so we can think of rating agencies like Standard Poor's and Moody's. And in Korea, we have three independent domestic uh, rating agencies. Each of them is, has uh, a strategic alliance with uh, three of uh, global uh, rating agencies, Standard Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch's. But uh, the problem is this 
huge rating agencies, even the domestic rating agencies in Korea, uh, do not have sufficient incentive to gather, select, gather, or analyze and distribute inf information and about the SMEs. Because why? The reason is very simple. Uh, this market is not profitable, not attractive to them. So theoretically speaking, from designer's perspective, uh, the most important principle is incentive comparability. That means when you decide who should serve a specific function, that function should be allocated to the players who has the largest incentive to serve that purpose. So in this regard, we can guess that who is the player who has the largest incentive to gather and produce the information SMEs. In Korea, this is credit guarantee fund providers. So because they provide so many, provide credit guarantee grant, offer the credit guarantee so many SMEs. So they have, of course, they have much incentives and also they have a lot of information as well. So the KED, Korea Enterprise Data, was established as a sub theory of Korea Credit Guarantee Funds. Yes, uh, currently at the moment, commercial banks in Korea, large commercial banks, also gather the information and analyze uh, the information about SMEs, but they uh, concentrated, concentrate more on the more seasoned uh, SMEs. So they do not uh, have any information about startups. So last topic is about uh, SMEs and uh, capital market. I will talk about how capital market uh, help improve SMEs financing uh, in Korea. Uh, at the beginning of uh, the presentation, I emphasized the importance of bird eye view. But this view is uh, especially particularly important in the capital market because uh, many players, uh, many trading venues and instruments are interconnected. We need to have uh, uh, more like a systemic view in analyzing and the financing of SME through capital market. And the other point I would like to highlight is that we need to uh, pay more attention to exit route, exit channel uh, in the capital market because uh, the main players in this market is venture capitals or private equities. So if they have problems in, um, in finding appropriate exit route, they will have problems in getting their money back. Then they won't, will not, cannot recycle uh, the, re the money into uh, the other startups or as, uh, other SMEs. So the most, imp from policymakers, perspective, the most important issue we must address is to build up more diversified and well-functioning uh, exit market. So venture capital is, of course, very important players. But in capital allocation through the fund of funds, uh, this picture reminds you of the picture we, I told you, I show you in relation to on lending but very similar, but uh, this similar logic applies to the capital market. And before 2006, in the Korea, the government, usually the small medium business administra administration and their its execution body, small medium business corporation directly allocate the equity capital to venture capitals. But from 2007, uh, just like on lending scheme and the loan provisions, we uh, came up with uh, the fund of funds. The fund of funds managed by the Korea Venture Investment Corporation. And this is a vehicle through which government equity capital is uh, allocated uh, to uh, the venture capital. The logic why we take care of, why we make use of this uh, vehicle is very similar to the motivation of why we use on ending process. So 
So the most important uh, issue as for concerning uh, the capital market is exit lout. The most important exit lout is uh, IPOs to new market going public. And the other is M&A. The interesting thing is that Korea has very vibrant uh, a new market, Korea. It corresponds to NASDAQ. As considering the uh, economic size of Korea compared with uh, that of US, we have a very vibrant uh, new market. But the IPOs uh, in Korea, uh, regarding the exit mechanisms, the IPOs to the new market cost uh, account for more than 80%. Remaining 20% is explained by the M&A. But the situation is quite the opposite in US. In US, an M&A takes up more than 80%, and the remaining uh, uh, the, the IPO going public uh, takes up only uh, less than 20%. But the problem in Korea uh, in finding asset channel is that if the stock market is down and the stock market is not doing well, uh, then it's very hard for venture capitals or private equity firms to find alternative channels. And uh, compared with M&A market, the, stock market exposed to higher volatility. So that's uh, a downside. So uh, because of this, the Korean venture capital capital market have to, have to come up with very innovative exit channels to, to take care of these issues. So this is very important. Uh, I will talk about this uh, in the later. And the other scheme is SPAC, a special purpose action company. This is a, uh, uh, very uh, popular in the U.S. and U.S., but uh, this is a, a combined scheme which is combining both IPOs and M&A, where M&A is executed in the private equity market. Uh, this, uh, mm, in U.S., of course, SPAC is applied not only to SMEs, also uh, large corporations can uh, use this scheme, but in Korea, uh, this is confined only to the SMEs. So I said Korea, uh, the investors in SMEs and venture companies heavily uh, reliant on the stock market as their exit channels. But M&A, uh, the other important channel, M&A, is not working that well. So, so venture capital have Venture capitalists have difficulties in getting their, returning their money back and recycling their money. So uh, they came up with, and Korean capital market came up with very inno innovative uh, exit channels. It, but this is not limited to exit channels, but as a innovative corporate finance tools. In Korea, very, we have very active and uh, vibrant uh, securitization market. Considering the economic properties of small and medium-sized enterprises, enterprises, because they have very high credit risk, SMEs uh, have to suffer from low credit rating, and as a result, they have to uh, burden. Uh, they have to, their uh, cost of capital uh, should be uh, higher uh, compared with the larger corporations. So if we can find the way or come up with some schemes which uh, could separate the credit risk from the SMEs, uh, that will make a huge contribution to reducing the cost of capital of SMEs. That's exactly what we expect from the securitization market. And uh, ABA, asset backs, uh, from uh, through the process of securitization, some security asset back security is created. If we take a look at uh, the pictures diagrams, uh, we can see that the securitization market plays an important uh, contribution to corporate finance, uh, followed by the corporate bond, uh, even. Uh, because uh, Korea, because we have uh, Korea is a very small and open economy, 
heavily reliant in overseas market. On the market cap basis, the foreign investors account for more than 30%. And uh, we are very vulnerable to exogenous uh, sudden style of capital flows and volatility fluctuations in inflows and capital flows. So it's very hard for uh, the Korean companies uh, depend solely on the equity market. So we corporations, uh, large corporations, and especially small and medium-sized enterprises in particular, depends more on more stru structured finance schemes like uh, uh, ABS, as a big securities. So let me give you a, some, uh, a couple of examples which shows how Korea uh, capitalized on um, the securitization as a means to uh, help finance SMEs. Uh, this is a very simple and typical examples. For example, uh, based on the bond with warrant and commercial bank issued by SMEs, uh, securities companies and Best Bank of Korea underwrite uh, these uh, securities. And based on um, these securities, uh, they transfer this security to the SBC and issue two tranches of securities. One is a, a senior note or with credit rating AAA, and the other one is a very risky one, subordinate that, that need to be taken care of. But in Korea, uh, the public institutions whose mission is supporting SMEs, the small and medium business corporation, execution body of SMBA, uh, took over uh, that uh, subordinate that, that help finance F SMEs. Uh, this is a the typical and widely used scheme in Korea uh, to mobilize uh, capital to uh, the SMEs. The other is the same, uh, but this is uh, uh, this uh, scheme um, use uh, double securitization in, in, instead of single one. And also, uh, this SFX security is uh, issued with uh, yen denoted uh, uh, securities. So this is targeting for institutional investors. And third one is very innovative. And just in 1990, just after uh, the economic cri financial crisis, Asian financial crisis in 1997, and just after the IT boom burst and uh, around subprime crisis 2008, uh, venture capitalists take advantage of uh, these schemes. Uh, but the venture capital, they have a lot of uh, SMEs, uh, venture capital portfolios. Uh, they are uh, pre-IPO groups. And based on this, uh, they uh, transfer this pre-IPO stock to the trust company, and based on uh, this trust company, trust company issued two kinds of certificates. One is a senior certificate for toward the commercial bank. The other is a subword certificate for the venture capitals. And commercial bank also make a contract with venture capital, sharing the gain if uh, that pre-IPO stock will be successfully listed in Korea Exchange. And commercial bank uh, transfer this package a finance contract to the SBC is so based on, on this package they issued ABS. So uh, venture comp venture capital. I, I'm not sure. Well, I I I I'm not sure whether uh, venture capitals in U.S. Uh, use this kind of exit scheme. I I don't think they uh, use this one because they are very active M&A market and other uh, diversified exit channels. But in Korea. Uh, venture capitalists and invest bankers come up with very innovative, in this sense, very innovative schemes uh, to help finance venture capitalists. If venture capitalists have problems in recycling their capital, uh, the SMEs and venture capitalists are directly influenced by the difficulties of venture capital. And the other one is uh, using synthetic CBOs. The defining property of uh, securitization is transfer of credit risk. But there are two ways. One is through the sale of asset. The other one is making credit derivative contract. So through the credit default swap. But through this process, I can't find uh, any problems in using credit default swap. But uh, in relation to subprime crisis, uh, everybody, many people blame the credit default swap, credit uh, derivatives for uh, criticize uh, this credit derivatives. But uh, if we, uh, if this scheme was properly used, uh, it's a very useful hedging tool.
So uh, then why you might ask question, uh, you uh, might be wondering why Korea uh, has been very successful in securitization. I can find a couple of success factors. So one is that we have very effective and solid legal framework called the ABSX. In US, uh, ABS and securitization market, the market developed first and then regulation comes. But in Korea, we provide the legal framework first and based on this act, a securitization market was introduced. The reason is that the securitization, the ABS Act was introduced just after uh, the Asian crisis. At the time, the government was a very, uh, uh, the government wanted to carve out the non-performing loans from um, the uh, commercial bank. Non-performing loan district asset from the commercial bank. They need some scheme to take care of these issues. So that's the main purpose of why the Korean government introduced a uh, securitization market. But as time passes by, non-performing loans is a very, plays a very minimal role as an underlying asset. Uh, it's uh, used, widely used as a corporate finance tools, regardless of the companies in Korea. And so, so uh, this uh, act clearly defines and true sales and who can be originators, what kind of asset can be securitized, what process should be followed, what kind of uh, so blah, blah, uh, et cetera. So uh, this act uh, clearly uh, removed the legal uncertainties related to the asset transfer. So as a result, uh, at the introductory stage, it encouraged active involvement from the wide variety of originators, investors, and IBS. What's interesting is that even during the crisis, during the subprime crisis of 2008, if we look at that 2008 year, Korea is the only country which has been successful in issuing securitized uh, asset-backed securities. So conclusions, is a time um, to wrap things up. So uh, in designing the architecture, for SME financing, we need to have for a systemic perspective. Uh, we must take, not just, uh, we, must, we must pay attention to the legal framework and policymakers, regulators, and information production, and three ways of uh, financing tools. Uh, uh, all of them are interconnected each other, so we need to take care of them at the same time. And the SME, by definition, they are very high risk. So high risk uh, investment targets. So government uh, must step in in some way or another so to take care of these issues. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, degree. It's not a matter of substance. Uh, regardless of countries, uh, even in US, small business administration support uh, SMEs. And uh, lastly, capital market development is vital because SMEs, if they, pro, if, if they uh, finance the capital through uh, by issuing and bond or uh, through the bank loans, uh, through, I mean through the debt contract, that these guys will expose to the default or bankruptcy uh, risk because that contract essentially have the concept of default. Then if they could uh, finance the money through with the financial contract that do not have uh, default or bankruptcy concept, that might be very useful. Uh, that's exactly uh, what we expect uh, to the equity uh, or stock market. So capital market should play a vital role in health finance SMEs. And in regarding um, capital market, concerning capital market, the most important policy agenda is to set up diversified and sophisticated, well-functioning uh, exit channels. Okay, thank you. Dr. Kim, thank you for that comprehensive overview of the SME financing architecture. Um, before we uh, throw it open uh, for our audience for the Q&A section, um, 
I just wanted to say a, a couple of words. Um, of course, my my expertise is not in finance, but in but I have been following the Korean economy for uh, for some years, and uh, and I can only talk about it in terms of the uh, thirty thousand feet. But uh, as I mentioned before, the large corporations are the most dynamic and world class uh, in Korea. But uh, SMEs are the ailing sectors, and usually referred to as the sickly younger brother. Uh, but this younger brother, of course, dominates the service sector, you know, employ most of the people. Uh, it's key to wealth distribution and key to the future of Korea's uh, competitiveness. Uh, from my under, uh, understanding of the uh, financial system for the SME, uh, there are particular downsides which, um, that you alluded to, but um, maybe, can, maybe you can address more directly. One of the uh, aspects about the financial uh, system for the SME is that they actually produce, ex produce very mixed results for the productivity of the SMEs. Um, the, um, I have heard, um, and in just in my discussions, that there is, there is the tendency of propping up unproductive SMEs because of the financial system. And they don't, not necessarily, uh, support always the cutting edge or the technology or the export oriented SMEs, but in fact also provide funding for domestically focused, the mom and pop shops, the cafes, and, and, and sometimes bubble industries like construction or real estate. Uh, particularly, I've heard a lot of criticism about the Korea Gu Credit Guarantee Fund, uh, where they, as you mentioned, create moral hazards and, and end up propping up what they call I guess zombie, um, zombie SMEs, which really doesn't do anything for 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 the economy, and this this creates problems for the good SMEs, unfortunately, because the banks, knowing that they have these uh, SMEs, have moral hazards. Now these care credit guarantees aren't enough, and these banks are requiring additional collateral for these SMEs, um, which creates disadvantage for. Um, small and medium-sized um, sectors even further. Um, and also, despite all the institutions that you've outlined, it's still clear that SMEs are disadvantaged in the South Korean economy. Um, as you mentioned, there's new pressures on banks to be financially sound, and we just went through two shocks within the last uh, 10, 15 years, making banks, of course, more cautious. And making them more cautious, the the, the most vulnerable are the SMEs because they lack the clout of these large corporations. So the banks tend to pull back from the SMEs, charge them higher interests. They're unwilling to extend the maturity of loans and, and so forth. Uh, and meanwhile, while the uh, large corporations have buffer, these SMEs are getting squeezed by fluctuations in, um, in the international uh, economy, raw materials going up, prices of raw materials going up. Uh, and just slow down in exports, and ultimately the SMEs are uh, are, are squeezed. So just kind of uh, maybe just to start off some basic qu uh, a basic question or two is um, has how does the financial structure um, has it reformed itself or is it, or is it continue to uh, pr how, actually let me take a step back how does the financial structure structure promote a more globally competitive SME sector. Uh, have they addressed these these uh, issues that have created the past problems in the SME, the unproductive SMEs? And um, and also, are there industries of the future that the government is trying to use these loans to promote in the SME sector? Um, uh, perhaps the government's thinking more in terms of. Last year, you talked about green financing, and they've targeted green financing in the SME sectors. Uh, is there other X sectors that the, the government is, is targeting? So that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Abraham, for uh, the insightful comments. Mm, every time I... Uh, uh, study or uh, discuss uh, issues related to uh, the SMEs, it reminds me of some laws and principles in the physics. Uh, that is, the uh, second law of 
thermodynamics. Actually, I undergraduate my uh, major is business administration. I have nothing to do with the physics, but uh, <laughs> as uh, we Korean guys uh, studied physics and biology, regardless of our, our specialties uh, field in the, in the undergraduate college. So this uh, role is also uh, called as the law of energy conservation. The second law of thermodynamics equals the law of energy conservation. So wh why I think uh, this uh, uh, principle and law reminds me, uh, uh, SME reminds me of this uh, law is that in finance area, not in physical nature of physics, even in finance and economics, uh, there is uh, something identical and very similar laws like the law of energy conservation. I think that is uh, energy, there is a law of risk, the amount of risk conservation, or might be uh, a debt capacity conservation. What I mean by this law is that if the risk itself does not disappear, does not disappear in this economy, just uh, the owner and exposure to this risk of debt is changed. So if we, so there is a dilemma, if, for example, if there is a huge, for example, in debt crisis, if the corporation suffer from high debt, then bank provide the capital to uh, the corporations, then they must uh, bear the, high, the commercial bank must bear the high risk and high leverage. And if they have uh, problems like, uh, European, uh, like French and Deutsche Bank and EU these days, because they invest too much in Greek treasury bond, sovereign debt. And then the other player that must step in and provide the capital is the government. And then this risk or debt is transferred automatically to the government. And if some government has a problem, they make a swap, or the other country's government must bear the cost. So. The same logic applies to the SMEs. The, what I mean this is that SME is a, from financial economist perspective. This is, this is very simple. This is another, SME is another name of very high risk, high return investment target. They support these countries. Somebody must share the risk. If that is not the government, public institution, then market must share it. So, uh, it, these days in Korea, I, I'm not sure, even in US probably through the Jobs Act, uh, politicians and policymakers so looks, uh, looks like uh, they, uh, they feel like uh, they can get away w with this risk, away from the Earth or other uh, universe. But they must remember that if they uh, support SMEs, uh, they must, that might uh, compromise safe and soundness of their fiscal conditions. So in this regard, we must be careful in supporting SMEs. This is a very good idea. Nobody disagreed on the idea we need to support SMEs because they are just like the poor uh, compared with the rich. Uh, in the corporation field, they are uh, um, in the weak position. We need to support these guys. But there is no free lunch. The government must bear the cost. So if the Korean government is, has a sufficiently uh, safe and sound fiscal conditions, they can do that. But if they don't, they do not, don't do this to the SMEs, even though that might attract many a vote from the people in the general election, the presidential election, that's not a good thing. The same here in the US. And you ask about, ask the financial services industry how to support, how to make uh, SMEs more globally competitive. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but here is one tip. And SMEs, for most of the Korean SMEs, 
especially in the field of IT, information technology, and some companies and biotech companies uh, uh, already globally compared it, but they still have problems in financing and the equity capitals uh, from the capital market. So, but uh, from the last year, the government uh, have becomes uh, feels more and more uh, difficulties in providing the capital, the government sponsored capital into the small and medium sized enterprise. So uh, they need to this globally competitive uh, candidate SMEs uh, must rely on the market. But we must remember that we cannot expect well functioning financial services to the SME, SMEs, well-functioning capital market to the SMEs without, without developing the capital, well-functioning and effective capital market in general. So the first thing we need to do is to develop an advance of financial services industry and capital market. So if we, if we, uh, if we put more emphasis on the SME financing innovations of uh, innovations of SME financing or green finance. It's just like uh, putting the cart before the horse. Mm. So uh, it's back to the basics. Uh, to help finance SMEs, we need to, uh, for example, relax regulations on the finance services industry. This is very hard for the Finance Services Commission at this time because uh, the uh, like Occupy Wall Street uh, environment uh, is just not that serious, but we in Korea also have uh, that kind of uh, atmosphere. So everybody criticizes the capital market, finance, and finance <laughs> services industry. It's very far hard for the government policymakers extend or relax the finance services industry. But uh, the situation is quite different. So uh, in the U.S., uh, Wall Street, yes. They uh, overuse, the misuse uh, credit derivatives. But there is, in Korea, there is no such thing as at least the OTC derivatives, credit derivatives. Uh, in, in terms of Korea, they are long way to go, yet to go. The situation is different. So in US, you need to go leftward. In Korea, go to rightward to find the optimal position. So we need to um, develop the capital market and the financial services industry. Great. Thank you. Let, let's take one question. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Dr. Kim. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a U.S. lawyer, um, and I know very little about the Korean economy. What struck me very strongly in your presentation is, was the extent to which there's government involvement at all levels in the financing. Compared to the U.S., it's a completely different world. In the U.S., um, our small and medium-sized businesses are by and large financed by banks uh, or by private investors who bear the risk. They don't expect someone else to take the risk because they get paid for the risk. As you know, you know if, you, uh, if, if there's risk, then you can, uh, you can um, uh, get a premium for, for bearing that risk. In Korea, it seems that no one wants the risk. Except everyone wants to load it off onto the government. Um, it, it seems like a, a very strange situation. So um, I guess my first question is, uh, what is the structural reason why it appears that uh, the financing of a small and medium-sized business in the U.S. is much more like a free market system, whereas uh, Korea seems very much uh, more like um, a socialist system? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> But compared with other countries, for example, with China and other countries, we, are, we still maintain more free market style uh, capital market. But uh, it depends on, on the economic development of each country. But in Korea, uh, the first reason is the economic development or financial market development. Uh, so our uh, capital market is not well uh, developed. Uh, we do not have that sophisticated uh, commercial bank or invest bank or capital market uh, which can take care of uh, these guys, SMEs, uh, high risk uh, invest target like SMEs. The, that it will be, that's a, but a, a simple and straightforward answer. And second one is that uh, Korea's uh, 
Uh, legal system, you are a lawyer. You know, Korea's uh, legal system is uh, very different from that of U.S. And in Korea, we have a statutory law system. And in U.S., you have a common law system. So in Korea, uh, if you do want to, if you do, if, for example, in the investment in Korea, want to engage in some activities, uh, that activity must be uh, specified and defined in the Security Exchange Act in the first place. So if it is not defined in the act, that means they cannot carry out that function. If I can put that in, in, in terms of the, the future of the U.S., I think what you're saying is that in the U.S., everything is permitted unless it's prohibited. Yes. Whereas in Korea, nothing is permitted yes, unless Yes, in Korea, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a difference between negative yeah. and concurrent system and positive system. Yeah. So we still have that one. Uh, that might give, I, I, I'm not sure whether chance is an appropriate word, but that might give the chance of opportunity to the government to stay in. Uh, wherever or uh, whatever they want. Uh, this might be a small expected, uh, explanation about the US. But we are, uh, we are still, uh, government plays, uh, still plays uh, some role. The, the direction is very promising. So uh, the market is uh, replacing government's law very quickly. So we'll see, uh, I, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, we expect uh, sooner or later uh, we're going to have uh, more market-oriented uh, system like U.S. Well, let's take two questions. Keith first, and then. Uh, yes, Keith Krulak from the State Department. Dr. Kim, it was a pleasure to hear your presentation. Um, I have two questions. Uh, I'll start with, I think, the easiest one first. I, I, I may have misunderstood your description of on lending versus direct lending, but it seemed to me that ultimately, with on lending, the government was providing capital to intermediaries to do their regular job, which to me suggests that it, banks just lack the capital or lack the funds, and somehow the government was providing that. And there, there has to be something different. I don't understand why the government needs to play that role in the on-lending if, if the commercial banks are providing their regular function. And that seemed very similar in the, your slide with the venture capital as well. If it's if these functions are normally working, uh, what's, what's the added benefit from that government capital if it's provided? Uh, the second question um, is sort of political economy. And I, I'm, I was surprised seeing President uh, Lee coming up with this focus on SMEs, given his background from a table chief position. Um, and the focus on finance is also interesting. I agree with you that all countries uh, focus on providing finance because it's a, it's a difficult segment, though important. But I wondered if this whole idea of chable or large co corporations versus small, medium-sized enterprises couldn't be better addressed through changes to competition policy and or changes to corporate governance. You had mentioned this, this committee focusing on SME industries or whatever, but perhaps one of the problems is large companies are involved in everything, um, and so if their corporate boards could focus them on their core, that would lead to more activities for other companies. I, I don't know. Just I'm throwing out some ideas. I'd like to hear your views. Thank you. Let's take one more. So go ahead. FTA, cross FTA on SMEs, it's particularly concerning opening up the financial and capital markets. And second question is, I think these are the top-notch words going on these days on Korean media, like 경제 민주화 or economic democratization in Korea. And how will, how is it ready? I mean, is Korean society ready to adopt such policy? And how financial market um, will be impacted by such policies in Korea? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, question. Yes. Oh, no, well, we'll take two and then we'll cut. Okay. Thank you. As for the on lending uh, scheme, I think it's uh, uh, at the Mr. Lawyer uh, talk about that, but as Korea is in the process of moving from more government uh, sponsored to free market system. So making use of uh, this on lending or other fund-to-fund system is uh, just like a kind of stepping stone 
move toward the market, more market-oriented system. And uh, you said, yeah, yes, we have uh, also, uh, uh, we can take care of the problems between SMEs and large corporations through uh, the anti-monopoly and fair trading, uh, you mean the competition theory on the corporate governance, yeah. That is also the other way uh, to take care of the problems. But especially after uh, the Occupy Wall Street, and uh, even as the as uh, this year uh, we have we are going to have general election and uh, presidential election as well. So SMEs and uh, supporting many SMEs supporting. Uh, measures and policies uh, attract many attention. Uh, yes, it's uh, some for political reason, but uh, I'm not sure whether uh, next year, uh, if the government, whoever will take the power, will have that much interest in SMEs, so we'll see. Uh, but as I, uh, at the beginning of presentation, I told, uh, told you that uh, even the conservative party in Korea, the, Senri Dang, I renamed from the Henry Dang, still uh, very moving, um, more and more progressive. Put more emphasis the redistribution of wealth rather than economic growth. So, um, yes, SMEs, we can uh, um, address uh, these problems through competition policy and corporate governance, uh, but uh, SMEs uh, supporting uh, help uh, mobilize uh, equity cap uh, capital uh, from the capital market and provide the capital to the SME is the other way uh, to support uh, companies. And this is uh, also, uh, you talk about competition policy. This is uh, uh, it's a very hot issue uh, discussed in the Shield Growth Committee, as in Korea. Uh, they, large corporations and SME fight uh, each other. Uh, some, um, a corporate meetings, uh, large corporate representative, large corporations boycott that meeting uh, corporate times, uh, but uh, I'm not sure how they, uh, where, how and whether they will uh, come up with more uh, visible uh, outcome um, to uh, support the idea of a shared cross. And it relate, it, this question is related to the uh, economic Democracy, democrat. Your question? Yeah. 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 Right. Yes, in Korea. Yeah, we are. I'm not sure. Uh, we are. Uh, this is SME uh, support uh, development SME, and health finance SME is a. Uh, I think is uh, economic issues, uh, but the problem in Korea is that this is strongly supported by the politicians. So, there. Are, they are politicians, so they are aiming at to achieve their political goals. So, uh, but the direction is clear. So regardless of the party who will take the power in the present election, they will continue to pursue this direction because uh, uh, they uh, already uh, include this uh, uh, SME support uh, policies as their uh, future policy that will be imprinted if uh, they uh, get the power. And FTA on SME. I haven't never thought about these issues, but uh, SME from, uh, you know, Korea is a very small and open economy. Small means uh, compared with uh, uh, US and UK, but uh, on the trading volume basis, we are number six in the world. And market cap basis, we are number 10th. And G cap, uh, per capita GDP is almost 24,000. So we are not that, uh, we are uh, readily, I don't agree with the idea that Korea is still included as an emerging market. Uh, that sometimes that makes me pissed off. <laughs> yeah? But uh, looking at the World Bank criteria and IMF criteria, Korea is still the advanced country. But the reason why we still regard this emerging country is that global, when it comes to uh, global investors, the global finance, when it comes to global financial market, they regard 
Korea as the emerging countries because uh, Korea stock index is still included in MSCI, Morgan Stanley uh, Emerging Index instead of Advanced Index. That I don't know why, uh, already. I don't know why they uh, continue to maintain uh, Korea as the member of advanced uh, emerging countries, uh, but uh, I don't. I don't agree on this idea. But uh, FTA SME, but Korea capital market. Uh, Korea SME is uh, some IT industry. So we have globally competitive SMEs. Uh, but I can all I can say is this. Because through the FTA, uh, mm -hmm. Korean SMEs have a great chance to extend, expand their market uh, to the U.S. And U.S. is the globally uh, more advanced market, so uh, they have more chance to be the global winner if they uh, will be successful in the U.S. market. But uh, the the. Uh, Handok, Mr. Handok, the previous uh, ambassador of Korea to the U.S., uh, he uh, come back to Korea as the chairman of Korea Trade Association. So I ask him, I promise, give me your name card. I will ask him how the FTA will exercise influence on SMEs. <laughs> and I will answer you by email. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, to me, SME is, is a cutting edge of, of the industries, the economy. Uh, you talk about YouTube, you talk about uh, Facebook, you talk about Apple. Those are the companies that, that uh, uh, at the beginning, at, the, at least at the beginning, uh, come out as an SME. But if the government plays such a strong role like uh, we've been guided through this, uh, your, your talk here, I just wonder whether this could be this kind of law and regulations and, and rules from the government would be convenient or good for a developing and growing economy with all established industries. Then the government with the bureaucracy there, they can sit there and decide, screening through the process and selecting uh, what type of SME they should uh, promote it, uh, they should promote and what type of uh, SME they should uh, not be too enthusiastic about. So I just wonder whether, whether, whether there have been any SME at the cutting edge of the industry that, that through the government has been promoted in Korea, or this is just uh, at certain stage in economic development of still growing uh, uh, economy. So you mean uh, SMEs in Korea? Like uh, industrial policy. Uh, it's going to have cutting edge uh, competitive uh, power without the support of Korean government? That's what you ask? I think that, uh, that the, the, the role of the government is very strong here yes. in the sense that it looks like an industrial policy. Okay. When the government decides what industry should be okay. promoted. What yes. In Korea, uh, the, uh, as for the industry policy, Korean government is already stay very away from, far away from the business practice. Uh, what I'm saying today's present, what I'm saying in the today's presentation is they involve the small business, small medium business administration uh, in some way or another involved in the allocation of capital to the venture capital, small and medium-sized enterprise. So we have another ministry which uh, regulate and covers uh, all the industries. There's a ministry of, and sometimes we used to have ministry of commerce, but we have now it's renamed as a ministry of uh, knowledge and economy. Right, knowledge and economy. Uh, but the problem is uh, that the point I'd like to make is that, uh, of course, uh, Finance Services Commission, the policymaker and regulator in Korea, deep involved in uh, the finance services industry. Uh, that's what we expect from them. That's what other countries, uh, regulators of finance services industry, uh, uh, is doing. But uh, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Knowledge and Economy in Korea, I think uh, 
they, I don't think there is no such thing as industry policy in Korea uh, currently at the moment. We used to have a uh, development age about 60s or 70s, but uh, except the finance services industry, uh, Korean government uh, leave all the decisions to the market and the industries. So because I focus on the finance, I, I, I look at the SME issues from the perspective of finance. That's why I uh, talk much about the government's laws and regulations. But from economic and industry sides, I don't think uh, they have any incentive or any willingness to interfere with the industry policies. Let's just take one final question. Uh, Sarah, you're from KDI. Uh, uh, you mentioned the Commission on Shared Growth, uh, which I think is very interesting. Uh, are there any models like this around uh, you know, other parts of the world, or is this very uniquely Korean? And also, what are the incentives built within to incentivize corporations to actually buy into this? Okay. Uh, so I, um, I'm not sure whether other countries have such a commission, but uh, uh, I'm not uh, the expert uh, in that area, so I will, uh, yes, I will ask uh, the other guys uh, who has expertise uh, in this area, but uh, I'm not sure whether other countries have uh, such a, uh, commissions. If uh, some country has uh, Mm, very huge and large uh, corporations, and uh, also at the same time, uh, very small and medium-sized enterprise, and there is a huge problems. Uh, the country might have a similar one, but in Korea, uh, so, yes. Yeah, so frankly speaking, we depend too much on the, a couple of global uh, companies. Uh, for example, Samsung groups. Uh, takes up about almost 25% of uh, market cap of a Korea exchange. Well, uh, uh, unfortunately, we are past our time, but uh, I want to thank Dr. Kim for his very insightful and comprehensive view on SME financing, and please join me in thanking him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.